So good uh, evening, I guess, for you, everyone. Um, thank you for coming to Stanza. Today we have a special edition of Stanza, um, which is uh, another exhibition. We did this. I had another collaboration with Gabriel. Um, Gabriel, please change your name so that everyone knows who you are. <laughs> I, think, um, I think I'm actually a in here on my work. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm Gabriel. <laughs> um, Gabriel is the curator of Sea Sunset Moon, an exhibition showing at the moment at Spazio Creative in Malta, um, showing until the beginning of May, if I'm not mistaken. Beginning right? of May, yeah. Very good. Um, so today, um, we will be talking about variations on solitude. Um, I will ask you please to put yourself on mute for now and throughout the session, feel free to unmute yourself um, to speak. We are not a very large group. Um, if you have some background noise, please put yourself on mute, okay. Um, so, Stanza is an initiative of the Poetry Society in the UK. The aim is to bring poetry to the general public and to make it more accessible uh, to everybody. And so, we will be talking about different artworks today, and there will be a focus on poetry. Um, for me, Sea Sunset Moon, there are, there are various elements. So. When we talk about solitude, it's not the same as talking about um, loneliness, but there is an element of loneliness. And the three elements, sea, sunset, moon, for me represent kind of danger and renewal, endings when it comes to sunset, and then an ending that leads to a second chance. And uh, when I think of the moon, I think of change, and I think of the phases of the moon, uh, that bring uh, rebirth. So this is a perfect time of the year to talk about um, rebirth and the, you know, rebirth and reflection through solitude, perhaps. And when I say reflection, I think of as well the moon and the sunset reflecting in the, in the, in the sea. So the way the session will go is after I stop listening to my own voice, I will give uh, the room to Gabriel, who will talk to us a little bit about the process and the artwork, and he will show you some, some of what the exhibition uh, looks like, which I'm really looking forward to see because I have terrible FOMO from not being in Malta and being able to go to the exhibition. And then we will do some writing exercises that I will guide you through. I will ask you please that if you are in the session to make an effort to write and not, not uh, wait it out. Um, doesn't matter if you don't write something you don't want to share, it's not obligatory to share. Uh, we are, um, you know, a large group for a workshop. So maybe I will ask one or two of you to share, just volunteers. So please don't feel self-conscious or that you are, being put on the spot, not at all. Um, there will be two exercises. Those of you who have been to my workshops or are coming to my workshops soon, this is just a small sample, but it's basically what we spend our 90 minutes doing. Um, and I'll talk to you about that later. Um, if you get logged out or if I get logged out because of my spotty internet, please just wait and, or if you get logged out yourself, just use the same link and I will let you in. And now I need to make Gabriel host. Thank you, Gabriel. All right, Mir, thank you very much for that introduction. Um, so yes, just a little bit of a recap, like Miriam said, I'm Gabriel, I'm the curator of an exhibition called Sea, Sunset, Moon. Um, with us this evening, um, I'm sorry to um, out you from your anonymity, but we have um, Anna Kalea with us, who is one of the artists 
as well as Sara Bonacci, who is also um, another of the artists in Sea Sunset Moon, and um, Michael Zammit, who is one of the authors of Sea Sunset Moon, um, one of the catalog essay, essay writers. Um, like Miriam said, Sea Sunset Moon is an exhibition which is open at Spot Secretive until the beginning of May. And what I'm going to do is just give you a little bit of a, a, a kind of background about what the exhibition is about. Um, at some point, I'm also going to show, pull up some images of the artworks and the space. Um, and this is a poetry, this is a workshop about poetry and kind of the, the, the poetic element. So then I'll also kind of close off by reading a little bit of poetry, which um, inspired me as a curator to, to put this exhibition together. Um, so as Miriam already mentioned, um, the exhibition is about solitude. Sea Sunset Moon is about solitude. Um, solitude has kind of been um, really unleashed into our lives like never before at the hands of the pandemic. Um, solitude has opened spaces and distance has opened have opened up between um, people and their families between people and their friends between people and themselves solitude has kind of been um, released into people's lives like never before um, solitude however has kind of two facets to it it's a double force on the one hand solitude can be um, an invitation or rather solitude can be the moment when one feels alone and one when one is away from his loved ones or her loved ones and solitude in that in that experience of it becomes something destructive and um, on the other hand solitude can also be an invitation for self-reflection it can be kind of that moment when one um, is invited or accepts or takes it as an invitation to um, understand him or herself more deeply and kind of um, more subtly as well so solitude has this double this double-edged element um, and in the context of the pandemic, this is something I wanted to explore. So I chose the, um, so when I was approached by Spazio Creative to kind of put this, this exhibition together, I chose the sea, the sunset and the moon as symbols, which could kind of open an understanding on our experience of solitude. And in my kind of estimation of how they do this is that the sea, the sunset and the moon also have two, two, uh, two aspects to it, a double element to it. The sea can be the sea which cradles and the sea which swallows. The, the sunset can be the kind of cold, um, can be the onset of the cold night, or it can be the kind of restful and um, close to the day. And sim similarly with the moon, it can be the waxing moon and the waning moon. So the sea, the sunset, and the moon also have this dual element to them. Um, and I gave all these ideas to the artists um, and, and they kind of unfolded their own interpretations of solitude within the context of the sea, the sunset and the moon. The sea, the sunset and the moon particularly become powerful for me because of, of the fact that we're kind of Mediterranean, we're islanders. Um, and the sea, the sunset and the moon are really forces which we are kind of subject to. Um, so uh, Miriam already mentioned, this is a multidisciplinary exhibition. So I have um, seven artists, there are seven participating artists. And I, each, each artist kind of came up with their own um, variations on, on, on the sea, the sunset, and the moon theme and solitude. Um, I'm going to share my screen um, if I can figure out how to do so. Yes, here we go. Um, to give you a little snippet of, of what the artworks in the show look like. There we go. So um, we have seven artists. The first is, is uh, um, Katie Sims. Katie um, works um, with, is a painter, abstract painter, and works, um, and, and her, her work kind of um, uh, was inspired, what you're seeing in front of you is called the Camino series, and this was inspired by her, by her experience of walking the Camino. Um, on the Camino, she kind of encountered solitude in both its destructive and its creative manifestations, and she kind of produced this series of works um, each each one represents um, an encounter which which kind of either opened her up or closed her down in some way um, and where solitude or perhaps some other psychological force was kind of was kind of present. Um, the second the second artist participating um, the second artist participating in the exhibition is Anna. Um, Anna again is a painter and she is interested kind of in dualities. Um, within her work, she kind of explores the tension and the dissonance between um, melancholia and aloneness, um, love and pain, and kind of within the domestic space, kind of 
explores this idea that um, the things which are closest to you can be the things which you love them, which love you the most and which give you the most um, in terms of comfort, care, and love, um, but can also be the things which, which hurt you the most. So there's this kind of tension. Um, within her work, um, solitude kind of becomes that space where this is reflected upon and, and where this um, is, is, is uh, um, unfolded. Um, the third artist we have is, is Sara Bonacci. Sara, uh, again, is with us this evening and works with Polaroid photos. Um, uh, her, her work um, starts from photography. She goes out and takes photographs of the places and the things which she loves the most. And then she soaks them in, in acid, water, buries them, or kind of subjects them to, to various other destructive, destructive treatments. Um, the idea here being um, to kind of mirror the effect of time and solitude and the other psychological forces on, on our understanding of ourselves. Um, when, when they are undergo this kind of destructive treatment, the, the photos um, start to become destroyed, they open up, they, they become other th things which are different to how they started off from. Um, and the whole idea here is to unpack and examine the effect of these kind of psychological forces on who we are as human beings and perhaps also as, as um, human, human creatures. And um, the deepest question here is that if kind of memory and if time can um, do these kinds of things to, to, or rather if time can do this kind of destruction to memory, then what is the difference between memory and imagination when we don't really know what's real? Um, the third artist in the show is Paul Sherry. Paul Sherry is a ceramist, um, a ceramicist rather, um, and Paul created a kind of trio of sculptures um, for for the, the the exhibition, each one um, exploring um, one aspect of the show. So one sculpture for sea, one sculpture for sunset, which is this lying down sculpture, and one sculpture for for moon, which is which is the sculpture we saw before. Um, Paul Paul sculptures um, reflect on the on the dual nature of of these of these um, symbols in quite quite directly. So for example, the sculpture which we can see in front of us, the, the sunset problematizes the bed as the space of rest and the, and the space of um, kind of, um, as a creative space and the destructive space. The bed can be a space of rest, but it can also be the space of depression and it can be the space of um, love, but the space of, of violence as well. So Paul and his work um, kind of explores the the dual the dual nature of 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 these of these three symbols and the sculpture is is the sea um, the sea which kind of lifts and the sea which which uh, or rather the sea which can be held and the sea which escapes through 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 one's hands there are these kind of two facets um, the fourth artist in the exhibition is uh, um, let's see is Glenn Kalea. Um, Glenn um, makes sculpture, makes, makes, creates these kind of dolls out of fabric and, and paper and, and other, other kind of um, miscellaneous materials. Um, dolls are a very strange, um, uh, are, are very strange um, things within, within kind of the history of humanity. Um, throughout, throughout, over the years, they have kind of picked up different different roles. Dolls can be creative, or can be playful, or they can be serious. You can have a child's doll, or you can have a voodoo doll. You know, they can be sacred or profane. Um, uh, what kind of remains the same throughout their changing roles is that dolls kind of reflect back to us our most deeply um, sublimated or or internalized or kind of. The things which we hold most dear, they reflect these things back to us and they reflect them back to us in a changed form and they are tools which we use to kind of educate ourselves into an understanding of or kind of play with or um, uh, examine. So dolls kind of pick up on our like hidden dreams and desires and and, and give these things back to us in, in, in a changed form. And obviously when we're talking about solitude, um, there's something to be said here. Um, this doll which you're seeing in front of you, um, her name is, is uh, Agnes. And this doll embodies the creative solitude. So she's kind of 
um, breaking out from from some kind of or, or rather not the creative solitude but the solitude which is which is chosen and the solitude which is chosen is very different to solitude um, which is which is um, enforced and the solitude which is enforced is embodied in um, this other doll um, whose name is is Karim and this doll is kind of sitting on top of a nest of bones and obviously solitude which is enforced is very different from solitude which is chosen so Glenn kind of created these two dolls to play with this idea of chosen versus unchosen solitude and the creative versus the destructive potential that could come from that um, the the sixth artist in the show is Norbert Norbert Francis Attard and um, Norbert works with uh, installation. Uh, let's see where his images are with installation. And he created this kind of light box where the word with the word surrender. Um, now, I don't have a video of this, but over the course of a couple of minutes, the word surrender kind of um, uh, appears and then disappears. And all you'd see is, is a mirrored face. Um, uh, Norbert's idea here is to kind of play with the idea of surrender as a creative force. So surrendering generally is understood as that moment when you kind of give up to an enemy, when you've lost the game, when you kind of, it's a losing position, you know, you've surrendered. Um, within uh, the context of this exhibition, Norbert wanted to kind of explore the idea of surrender as a position of strength. Um, one can surrender one's fears, one can surrender one's desires and one's kind of trappings, whether they're material or psychological. And then at that point, surrendering vulnerability, the giving up of, of the things that kind of make you who you are and perhaps hold you back, that becomes a, a creative, a creative moment, a creative a position of strength. And um, so surrender kind of flips around on its head. Um, the piece itself um, comes from a very deeply felt place for the artist. He was going through some kind of uh, some 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 personal um, um, traumas and had to kind of deal with a situation which he had no choice but to surrender to. And in that moment, um, the question of how to make a negative feeling, uh, an experience which is generally thought to be of as negative, into something which is positive, became very important for him. And this this work kind of manifested manifested from that. Um, the seventh artist, um, and this is another, this is kind of another shot of the whole exhibition. Um, the seventh artist is Chelsea Muscat. Chelsea is a video artist um, and created two, two video works, which unfortunately I can't show you online because they're kind of exclusively showing in the space but created two video works um, that deal more, more directly with the, with the kind of COVID situation. So in Chelsea's work, she creates a narrative of exile, isolation and loss, where this kind of um, wandering, wandering, journeying hero or journeying kind of person um, is exiled on this island and, and seeks to, seeks to um, escape and ultimately isn't able to and in that inability to kind of um, get what she wants has to kind of come to terms with the with the situation and this is this is within within the narrative of the story there's this kind of unnamed sickness which is mentioned so it's very kind of COVID adjacent and and the idea is to to play with this team um, but again the narrative is this movement from from um, desolation to reconciliation let's say and so those are the those are the seven those are the seven artists in the exhibition. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, um, throughout this show, um, like, like I mentioned, the, 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 whole, the whole idea, the whole thought here is to try and investigate those moments when solitude becomes creative, when angst, turmoil, and suffering more generally become creative, and when these things kind of become a tool for the bettering of ourselves and ultimately for everything and everyone around us. And this, this need, this kind of narrative, this, this journey, this arc is, is found in mythology. Um, within the kind of story of the hero's journey, we find, uh, we find a kind of model for the transformation of suffering into, into um, the, the apotheosis of one's material conditions or the, the, the bettering of oneself. Um, Ulysses, for example, Odysseus is kind of flung out onto the wild seas after the Battle of Troy and faces turmoil, angst, adventure, loses all his men, 
um, is seduced and tempted by various um, men, women, and creatures. And through the kind of, uh, through his attempts to deal with all this, comes back home to Ithaca as a changed and, and better person. So one can almost say that Odysseus finds his solace in solitude and through that transforms himself. And this exhibition to kind of wrap it up is, is brought about, was brought about to kind of attempt this transformation and to attempt this, this kind of um, uh, final step in the hero's journey of transforming um, uh, or finding solace in our in our solitude and particularly in the newly opened solitudinous spaces which we're kind of going having to come to terms with um, as a nation and well as that as, as humanity in general um, um to kind of wrap it up i'm going to take a bit of a left turn and read a snippet from t.s Eliot, which um has a little bit to do with the hero's journey and a little bit to do with mythology and it's kind of another instance where Eliot is looking for solace and solitude and whether he finds it or not is up to the reader to 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 uh, um, decide but there's this kind of attempt and this is just another kind of li little bit of literary um uh, a, a small literary fragment which was absorbed into the kind of exhibition and, and formed the the um, what was part of the, the, the root bed of, 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 of this whole idea. And here is um, Eliot from um, the Four Quartets. So, home is where one starts from. As we grow older, the world becomes stranger, the pattern more complicated of dead and living. Not the intense moment, isolated with no before and after, but a lifetime burning in every moment. And not the lifetime of one man only, but of old stones that cannot be deciphered. There is a time for the evening under the starlight, a time for the evening under lamplight, the evening with the photograph album. Love is most nearly itself when here and now cease to matter. Old men ought to be explorers, here or there does not matter. We must be still and still moving into another intensity for a further union, a deeper communion through the dark cold and the empty desolation, the wave cry, the wind cry, the vast waters of the petrel and the porpoise. In my end is my beginning. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Gabriel. Um, well done. The exhibition looks uh, really beautiful. The, I, I love the setup. I mean, being familiar with Spots You Creative, I really like what you did with the space. Yeah. Um, and as I said earlier, you know, I really would go <laughs> if I could. Um, so, you know, I urge everyone hasn't been to, to go and visit and send me pictures, please. Um, so I would also like to read some some poetry before we get to the the exercises. The first poem is called "The Solitude of Night." It's a translation of the work by Li Bai. The Solitude of Night. It was at a wine party. I lay in a drowse, knowing it not. The blown flowers fell and filled my lap. When I arose, still drunken, the birds had all gone to their nests and there remained but few of my comrades. I went along the river, alone in the moonlight. And the second poem is by Mark Strand, Keeping Things Whole. In a field, I am the absence of field. This is always the case. Wherever I am, I am what is missing. When I walk, I part the air and always the air moves in to fill the spaces where my body has been. We all have reasons for moving. I move to keep things whole. And so Gabriel, would you make me host again, please, so that I will be able to share. So in the next part, I'm going to do 
two exercises. Um, these are ekphrastic exercises, meaning that I have used the works of art from the exhibition so that we may produce uh, new works of art. So ekphrases means making art from art. Um, this is an exercise that I, I, I like to use myself in my own writing practice, um, especially when I see works of art live. Um, I, I almost invariably get, get an idea for something to write when I go to an exhibition, generally more than one idea. Um, and so I tend to visit more than once. Um, the first time I'm absorbing this kind of general, um, you know, the, the exhibition as a whole. And when I visit again, um, there would be a couple of pieces which really attract me and I tend to focus on those. So I was really spoiled for choice because Gabriel sent me a lot of pictures to choose from um, and uh, it was difficult to choose, I have to say. But um, I'm gonna use some that I thought would be helpful for everybody. And just a moment. So I, uh, we are conducting the session in English. However, do feel free to write in any language you prefer. And do feel free to use, to write either poetry or prose. I'm, as usual, having some technical difficulties, but... So, I'm going to give you a title, which I'm going to write in the chat for your ease. These are lyrics from Massive Attack, and that's going to be what you're going to base your piece on. So I was looking back to see if you were looking back at me to see me looking back at you. That's from uh, Safe From Harm. And then, so I'm going to show you a picture and then you are just going to write whatever comes to mind. For those of you doing this exercise for the first time, I'm going to give you some tips. Um, so keep in mind um, where your thoughts immediately go and where your eye immediately rolls to in the picture. Also think outside the box, so to speak, in, in the way of what the artist is not saying in the picture, um, what they are not including. And um, in your mind, expand on the picture in all directions. And I'm going to give you seven minutes. seven minutes from now.
two more minutes. And I'll give you a few seconds to finish off your piece. So I'll go uh, straight into the second exercise and then we will, uh, if anybody wants to share, we'll share afterwards. I forgot to mention that the, the first picture was by Sarah Bonacci, who's here with us in the room. Um, and if you have any questions, we'll have some time at the end to, to ask questions. In the second exercise, I'm going to be using more than one picture and it will work like this. I will give you again a title or you can also use it as a launch pad to start off your piece. So as your first phrase or sentence. And then after a few minutes, I will change the picture and I will say change and you will have a new prompt. Ideally, you carry on um, with what you're writing into the second and third prompt. So something that um, you try to make coherent, don't worry too much at this point while you're writing, never worry while you're writing <laughs> creatively, you, you can edit afterwards. So, so if you suddenly find yourself changing topic because the picture has changed, just go with it, honestly, it will probably work anyway. Um, so I'm the, the title, so I took the liberty of using the title from um, if I'm not mistaken, let me not be mistaken. Let me check. Okay. From Katie Sims' um, Camino series, which is, is the title of one of the, of the um, pieces, he spoke from where he hid because I felt like, you know, it kind of wrote itself. So um, I used that. So that is your title or where you start off from. And I'm going to share my screen again and just check that I don't give anything away. Okay. I'm sorry that there's going to be also the I from before, but I rather that than give you your second prompt before it's time. So everyone get ready and there you go.
change. change. And I'll give you a couple of minutes to finish off.
So here we had, um, he spoke from where he hid by Katie Sims, Solitude by Anna Kaleya, and um, I'm not sure what this piece was called, but it is a, a partial um, picture of the piece by Paul Sherry, the sculpture by Paul Sherry. Uh, just moon on that one, uh, Mir. What is it? Moon. Moon. So, I could see that you are all busy writing, which is for me the my favorite view of people. Um, did anyone write something they would like to share, or part of something they would like to share? Just before you read, tell me which, um, whether it was exercise one or two, that's all. Okay, we have Corinne. Go ahead, Corinne, just unmute yourself. One second, I'm gonna turn on the lights because it's really dark in my room now. Okay, yes, please. Okay, that's a little bit better. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna read the first one, the first exercise. So, um, all right. <laughs> You'll see lots of quotes on Instagram that tell you growth is a part of life. I mean, it's not a lie. Life is about growing, whatever age. It happens, and you can't get out of it. These fucking positive quotes, these shit Hollywood movies make life seem so matter of fact. When you try to apply whatever it is, nothing goes as planned, as planned, as much as you strive for it. Growth is cliche, really. It's not fun. It's not, it's not about figuring out what the fuck it is you want to do in your life or where you want to be. It's actually all about looking back, back at who I was two years ago, back at who I was 10 years ago, looking back, looking back at who I was and I really miss her. She was strong, although naive, but she faced the world with such stubbornness. Now I feel like someone is choking me and I don't know if it's me. I don't know who I'm going to be. I don't know where I'm going or how I'll get there, but I know I will. She'll be there, each one of them, the past versions of me, still in me, right here. So, yeah, Thank it. you, Karen. I agree with the phrase, nothing goes as planned. It's a very, very familiar um, feeling, but sometimes it goes a little better than planned, so that's okay too. Does anyone else want to share? Can I, can I ask you a question, Corinne? Um, first of all, I thought that was really cool. Um, but I was just, I just wanted to um, kind of ask you, what were your kind of, so that was a response to the photograph of the eye, right? What were, what were your thoughts? Um, how, what was your thought process there, if you, if you feel comfortable sharing? Um, I think that eyes, you know how they're, like people always say eyes are the window to the soul. I think that just looking at at that eye right there, it kind of made me see a bit deeper, kind of like um, like honing in on something more mindful, something a bit more on a co conceptual level rather than the physical eye itself. I see, very cool. Um, that's really interesting. So you kind of took the 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 metaphor of of seeing to a, a different place mm -hmm. very cool thank you for that thanks for your question gabriel it's a very always interesting to know where a writer is going and what angle they choose to take it really um very so much between between all of us so it's always it's always a nice insight um sean you'd like to share you can just do this, but <laughs> okay. okay. Go ahead. I saw, I saw someone else managed to put their hand up. I think someone had their hand up before me as well. I don't know if um, it's. Uh... 
Okay, there's Alessandro. Sorry, I didn't see that, but but you can go ahead and we can have Alessandro afterwards. Okay. Um, uh, I thought the second one he spoke from where he hid. Um, right. So he spoke from where he hid. So long in the same space, his shoulder blades had rubbed the paint from the wall, revealed the grain of the stone. So long searching now, her face spoke the weather. All she wants is the unguent of his face, his voice slipping over her like water. All he wants is to be found. He spoke from where he hid. And when the door was opened, the light revealed a sea change. Solitude had drawn flowers on his skin that glowed when she laid the moon at his feet. Wow. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. I can see the elements from the the three um, pictures and the, I mean the sculpture as well. Really mm. good. I didn't Some... try to disguise them at all. It was... <laughs> they're just there um it's amazing sometimes these first drafts when you're um you know you have a timed exercise this tends to happen in in that that is why the work the kind of the workshop environment works because you second guess yourself much less and and so the work is free to flow out without you going ah oh, this sounds mm -mm. you know or stopping yourself from using certain um turn of phrase mm -hmm. but when you're kind of cornered in a workshop situation <laughs> you you know the, a part of yourself that stops you from being free um shuts up essentially mm -hmm. <laughs> it, ha has, it has no voice so well the, th the thing the thing i liked there was i thought i'd finished when when I, I wrote he spoke from where he hid but then you put up the third image and I was like oh god okay I have to think of something else now so that was that was nice that was pushed me. good good I like to push <laughs> um thank you Sean Alessandra sorry I didn't see your hand earlier is it okay if I um paste it in the chat and someone else reads it because my house is a bit sure crazy loud right now I will read it for you, no, no worries. Right. Hopefully it's a language I understand. <laughs> um, okay, he spoke from where he hid. He spoke from where he hid. He sits behind the blazing bright screen. The only thing lighting up in the room he's in. Introverted writer, creeping the shadows at night. Too quiet, too cautious, too afraid, like a rat. His spine all scrunched like a half moon of stone. He aches, he breaks, he's all alone. After a night of scribbling dark, unforgivable things, he drags his bones to bathe and waits for the last sun to rise. The moon turns to clay as the warmth cradles him and falls to his feet, which go limp in the water. The fate of many rats living in the solitude of the sewer. I love the moon turns to clay. <laughs> Thank you, Alessandra. Would you like to say anything else about this piece? Um, I, I was just... I guess trying to incorporate the three pictures you, you prompted and also um, the sea, sunset and moon. I wanted to sort of collaborate all of that into the poem as well and the <laughs> idea of the solitude. Thank you for sharing that. Right, um, so our time is almost up but I was going to give some space for questions uh, especially for the artists who are with us today. We have um, Sarah Bonacci, Anna Kalea, and someone's left. And we have Michael with us. We have Michael. I thought we had 
Emma, uh, sorry, Katie earlier? We should have had Katie, but, but she was able to make it this evening. She texted okay. me with a little bit of a headache. Oh, all right, all right, no worries. Um, okay, so I, I did show I did show work by both uh, Anna Kalea and uh, Sarah Bonacci, and um, what Michael Zamit has done is he has written an, an essay, a philosophical essay, which is in the catalogue. Um, Gabriel, does the general public have access to the catalogue at the exhibition? Yes, the catalogue can be bought from the exhibition space. Um, um, yeah, well, if you ask anyone at Spazi Creative at any of the desks, they'll be able to they'll be able to um, get you a copy of of the catalogue. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if if the catalogues of at Spazi Creative have finished, get in touch with me, and I will um, also um, deliver a catalogue. Very good. Um... Michael, would you like to share any thoughts with us about your process before we end the call? Hello, hello, hello. I'm not sure about thoughts, but I can share a poem okay. from, from his spoke from where he hid. <clears throat> um, somehow there was, uh, differently from the first attempt, to which, which um, prompted me with this feeling of statis staticity, this second um, series of um, pictures um, did uh, released the opposite um, drive. So he spoke from where he hid with a whimper and a warp of wherevermore every whorl of the liquidity walking through the realms of transience washed away in streams of memories with whirling dervishes dizzying in the crescent voices, mouthing Cassandra's message of stillness. <clears throat> That's what came into my head. I, I love the sound in that, Michael. You have a lot yeah. of, I, yes. want to, I want to say wind in it. Yes, 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 yes. That's how, that's how it, it came about. In the other, in the other exercise, the first one, the sounds that started emerging were somewhat different. Shall I read it? Um, sure. insig insignificantly slowly, alchemical time slides through the fingers of life swiftly, marking the sprinkling of a restful moonbeam, and the words set themselves apart from the silence, slipping the straits of Clesidra from nothing into emptiness eternal. Mm. Here you had more for me, like a, like a river flowing, a more of a, 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 a slippery kind of sound. Yes, yes. I, sound, I, I feel really strange saying there's a lot of wind and there's a slippery, <laughs> but, but that's what yes. I get. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Sean? Yeah, just quickly, I just wanted to ask Sarah, it looks like you've done a lot of um, um, experimentation with the Polaroids and these kind of photos. I was just wondering to what extent what comes out uh, is still a surprise for you or, and to what extent it's, it's something fairly predictable now in its effect. You're okay. muted, sir. Can you hear me now? Yeah. So to be honest, as a, as a process, even though I have been experimenting with it for a while, it's always remained very unpredictable for me because um, even though I try to use the same chemicals, the same water temperature, the same process, it always, always, always turns up out different. So when I, <clears throat> when I for example, soak Polaroids, I always check them every day and it's like the kind of effects that are, that are happening are always so different that the process within itself gives me a lot of, of, of satisfaction just because I feel like it does represent um, how life flows a lot for me because even though to a certain extent we try to control each and every um, outcome we we never have full control that's how life works so I, I i feel like that's why i fell in love with the process is just so um 
metaphorical for me, especially when I, I bury certain Polaroids and I leave them buried there for like nine months, a year. I almost forget how the original image, what the original image looked like. And then I, I, I dig it up. I'm always like surprised by, by what happened, how the certain elements or season affected the image. And it's, it's, it's a nice surprise every time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That was a very interesting question. Um, it really, I, I'm really interested in in the effects of destruction, and I found that very intriguing. Um, and you know, I really enjoyed your pictures. Thank you. Um, I have a question for Anna because we have not heard her voice, and we must because we asked her to come today. Um, so Anna, my my experience, and from what I've heard from my friends other creatives. The lockdown had two effects. Um, for me, I had an initial phase of um, a lot of production, a lot of writing. And then because I tend to react a little late um, as a person, I, you know, um, months later, so we went into lockdown in Malta in March and we had all this time of like, what's going to happen, what's going to happen. And then in December, I, I crashed. Like I suddenly dawned on me that we're in the middle of this thing and I could not write for a while. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about your experience during lockdown and how it affected you creatively. Um, hi. <laughs> um, it's quite interesting actually, because we've been in, we've been in under the pandemic for two years now. And those two years have been probably the most formative um, in so many ways. I, in 2020, I was in Cornwall in the UK and I was a student um, at a fine arts college. And I was like full of uncertainty, but very excited to graduate. And then the pandemic happened and I was forced to move back to Malta and I was thrown into solitude and I worked in my parents' basement for a whole year until a solo exhibition. Um, and even though I think mentally I wasn't quite there because you said that you, you kind of like hit it late, like your <laughs> the shock of, of COVID. I think I got the shock like immediately because of being away, having to move back um, and having to work towards this big deadline of the solo exhibition. So even though it was really creative and I was I, pr I produced the most work I had ever produced in my life. I mean, I had never produced 42 paintings before, like in, in a row. So and I probably made more because this is what I selected for the exhibition. Um, yeah, I probably worked on like 100 paintings in a year. Um, so that was like extremely creative, but also very, very draining and it was very difficult. Um, I was just alone all the time. I was really like consumed by, by painting. I don't think it was a very healthy balance. And also I was going through a, a breakup and it was very emotional. Um, and then 2021, like year two, um, after the exhibition, it was kind of like returning to myself and finding myself in Malta, enjoying the sea. And it, it found me enough, like, the sunset moon was the result of me finding myself again rather than me losing myself. And solitude, as I was creating work for Sea Sunset Moon, was extremely creative um, in a different way, in more of a healthy way. Um, rediscovering the sea and um, swimming every day finding um, um, yeah finding finding community in Malta finding connection so um, yeah year two was was very was very was much more formative in a productive way and even though I produced less work probably overall mentally and emotionally it was much more um, nutritious <laughs> to say that <laughs> but yes okay, yeah, that's that. Sorry, Emma, go ahead. I just was wondering if I could jump in with a question or if we're wrapping up. Yes. Go ahead. Well, I have no pro. I'm mindful of your time, so if anyone needs to slip out, please do. But otherwise, I am absolutely not in a rush. So. I'm here, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> okay. okay. Great. So actually, this is also for Anna, um, because besides the feeling of of you know, the, the, the loneliness and solitude that, that comes across in, in your paintings very strongly. I, I'm quite interested in, um, obviously, your use of light and how painting is a, is a temporal practice in, in, in that you, it takes place over time. You have to paint at certain parts of the day. 
Um, and But you're also, as a painter, sort of translating life from the real physical world onto canvas into a material form. And sort of, so, and su sunset and uh, moon, as well as the sea, are sources of light. Um, and so I'm just wondering how time of day um, relates to your practice and sort of how does one take notes, how do you take notes of, of what the natural world offers in, form, in, in sort of in terms of notes about light and how did that affect the kind of work that you have in the exhibition? Like are different paintings happening at different times of day? And yeah, so anything. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's really interesting. I mean, actually at the moment, um, and actually this was a result of COVID. I used to paint a lot from life. And then during COVID, I couldn't do that. I couldn't like get people to sit for me or um, paint outside really. And I started working from photos. So actually light and um, source material happens like in life. So it's extremely autobiographical. Like the bath, like me in the bath is me having a bath, you know, and um, the, the sunset in, in Gozo is, is actually the sunset in Gozo and I was experiencing it alone. And um, so, so light affects, I mean, the source imagery comes from my actual life. You know, I take photos, I draw from life and the ideas develop as life happens. Um, and then when it comes to painting, it's really funny because I actually have to like reduce the effect of, na of nature in my studio. I have to like black out the window and be able to see the, the light, the canvas or the panel without any reflection. And it's, it's almost like creating a, a hole away from, away from life, like, um, I need to I need to disconnect from people to focus on painting. I need to shut out the natural light to be able to focus on surface and 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 edge work and all of these little like hints. Otherwise, there'd be lots of glare. So it's funny. Inspiration is really like within life, but then the process of painting is sort of away from it, like creating a portal away from away from that. Does that answer your question? I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, I can, yeah, I can, I can sympathize with the, the question of um, finding balance and kind of gorging on your art and then finding yourself a little empty and having to fill your cup with, you know, community and experience and then scurry back in, so to speak, to to <laughs> to to create um but yeah there was that thing during during the pandemic or during the days where because as such we didn't have a very very strict lockdown but during those days where you couldn't fill in on those experiences you you found yourself or at least i did scraping the bottom of the barrel sometimes and then when things opened up and you go to the theater or to an exhibition or you listen to live music again, suddenly you feel this, you know, this thing that you were missing and you didn't realize just how much you were missing it. Um, you know, fill your cup again and then you are able to produce. And then suddenly when you are allowed to be with people, you want to not. <laughs> in a way you know so there was yeah the, the 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 balance was was curious do we have any other questions this is really that was a very interesting question emma thank you no doesn't seem like any more questions um gabriel do you have any final words um, from my end i just want to say thank you this was again a really interesting experience a very um, nourishing experience, I think, for for me and for all of us. Um, for those interested in in the writing, I will be organizing an extrapolation of this um, this session today, which would be more focused on just the writing part, but also we will use some of the artworks again. I do have permission. <laughs> um, and it, you know, we will we will kind of go deeper into the process of ekphrasis and and writing. So you are all um, welcome to join. Um, and that's it. Who, you know, if you want to know more about stands up, do feel free to to email me. I'll put my 
email in the chat for those who would like to get in touch or do it now. Um, and that's it. We would, um, stands was generally organized once a month when I have enough time to do it, but I generally try to organize it once a month. And the topics change, but it is all, always based around uh, poetry, poets, or adjacent art. Um, so thank you for, for being here today. Gabriel, do you have any closing up? Just give us some information about the exhibition for those who are able to make it, perhaps. Yes, I think it's, um, thank you very much for that. Mir. First of all, thank you for hosting um, myself and, and the team. Um, this is really something which I enjoyed very much. I mean, this whole exhibition came from a very personal place for me and seeing the work that the artists do unfold this, this very deeply felt kind of sentiment is uh, quite something. And then seeing that work go on into the world and have its own life and then to have um, other others um, respond to that work with 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 their own thoughts and their own ideas and and having that that initial creative seed um, grow into the world in such a diverse way is, is very touching to me. So so thank you for hosting us, Mir. Thank you everyone for joining. It's really really lovely and really a pleasure to see this happen. Um, some some um, information about the exhibition. Spazi Creati. It's in Spazi Creative. Uh, closes on May 8th and um, there are a couple of days where I will be in the space meeting people having a chat um, just kind of meet the artist slash curator kind of moments and the next one will be this coming Thursday so the day after tomorrow at 6 30 with a couple of other dates which you can find on the Spazio Creative website um, uh, yeah catalogs can be bought from the space and I think uh, yeah, I think that's that. Thanks, thanks again for, for, for joining. Great. So thank you all. I hope to see you again. Um, and uh, from my end, just good night. And I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.